Uh, Phoebe, hello. How are you? Lisa Marie, hi. Sweet Cereal, welcome. Luciana and Anne, next. Hi. Jamie, hello. John, hi. Talia, welcome. Maisie A, hello. How are you? User 89, hi. Welcome to Love Ship, everybody. Hello, Rick. If you're new here, click that follow button. Double tap that screen. Drop those corgis for your boy. Make those corgis shake their ass. Everybody who drops a corgi, I'm going to follow you back. Mikhail, hello. Talia, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Sharp King, hi. Lara, hello. How was your weekend, everybody? Hello, Mallory. Me, hello. Jason, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Alara, hello. Hello, Amber. Mark, hi. Michael, hello. Jose Diaz, welcome. Howard, hi. Amber, thank you for the follow. You're the best. User 87, hello. Jay, hi. Hello, Lisa. Jess on tonight? I don't know. We'll see. What am I doing? I'm just hanging out in the love ship. What are you doing? Jess has some phone calls to make. I don't know if she'll be in the love ship tonight or not. But maybe. We'll see. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. What brought you joy today? I've been playing that new Zelda game. That brought me joy today. The Tears of the Kingdom or whatever it's called. Danny Wire, hello. You're horrible today, Lisa. Why are you horrible? What's going on? Brad, hi. Brooklyn, hello. Kanye West, hello. Hassan, welcome. What's going on, Lisa? Why are you doing horrible today? You missed my laugh? Well, hello, Clown. How was it? I haven't played it yet. Um, I'm still playing it. I'm only like three, four hours in. And I really, really enjoy it. What are your vices? Um, I don't know. Like, I'll drink like twice a month. <laughs> That's about it. Lauren, hello. Chaos Walker, welcome. Super Ken's main weakness... I can't say that on TikTok. <laughs> How are you, Jenny? Scott, welcome. I got permanent again for the third time because someone... Oh, Lisa, I'm sorry. Alex, hello. Rob, welcome. Yeah, the, the new Zelda game is, is neat. It's a cool little game. Can you giggle a little bit? Make me giggle. It's a cool game. It's kind of like action-y. At least in the beginning. A lot of putting things together. It's cool. It's like a Lego adventure almost. Haley, hi. Hello, Becky. Mini puzzles. Right now, there's not a lot of puzzles. Like, right now, like, for example, um, last night I got really excited because I found an axe in a log, right? I beat up a bunch of enemies and I found an axe. And I was like, if I'm going to hit a tree with this. And if a tree falls down and turns into a log, I'm going to be so excited. So I hit a tree with the axe and it turned into a log. And I was super super excited because there's a big body of water there and in the game you can like take logs and stick them together so i made a raft and then i found a sail and i stuck the sail on it and i threw it in the water and the wind blew me in the, in the water pause like it's really it's really fun where you have to like build your own way through the game i think it's really cool i forgot the time is it's getting light outside hello adelie Opinion on people who change gender. My opinion is YOLO. We only get one life. And if that's what you want to do, if that's what's going to make you happy, go for it. 
Nayab, hello. Am I okay? I am okay. Thank you for asking. So I have a question. What's your question, Natalie? Am I in a spaceship? Yes, I'm in a love ship. Thank you for noticing, Caro. Are you from Ohio? So kind of like a survival... So it's... N That's the thing. I don't like survival-based games. It's not like a survival-based game, Alira. It's... It's the mechanics of a survival-based game. A survival-based games were made to be fun. You know what I mean? It's like... Nayab, thank you for the follow. It's like a sandbox, and you have like a a Link character, right? You have a Link action figure, and you're in a sandbox, and you're like, oh, I've got some sticks over there. Let, let, me, let me go over to the pile of sticks over there, you in the sandbox, and build a bridge for my my link character to climb up. That's what it's like. It's like literally sitting down in a sandbox with an action figure. That's what it feels like. Cause you can go grab some sticks and build bridges if you want to. Cause you're like, you have this ability where you can go like, grab things and make them flow. And you're like rotating them and setting them down. Like you can make bridges, you can make rafts. That's the extent of it right now is our rafts and like bridges and things. But I'm only like three, four hours into the game. It's really cool. It's not like it's, not like a survival game, but it kind of is at the same time. Like, it's it's fun. It's not stressful. Like you're, you're excited to build things instead of like, ugh, I have to build a thing. At least as of right now. Ball, thank you so much for the ball. Hello, Rihanna. I'm recently talking to a guy. I don't want to seem too interested or put in more effort. Why? Why, Adley? Why do you want to do that? How do I know if he likes me? If he puts an effort. Adelie, anybody who likes you is going to put an effort. So you not wanting to put an effort is going to show him that you don't like him. So just put an effort. Just put an effort, Adelie. And if your effort is not being matched, you communicate that. You communicate your needs and your in your situationship and the relationship. Just be you. Be you. Put, it, put your most into somebody. And they're either going to match your energy or they're not. But... You don't have to manipulate somebody into liking you who actually likes you. I was interested in me too as in a potential relationship. So you want to know if somebody's interested as in a potential relationship. For one, are you flirting back and forth? Have you flirted with this guy? I'm assuming you talk. So that's a good sign if he's flirting. He at least finds you attractive. Now, does he want to or does he want something real? You're going to know based on his actions. Is he planning things other than Netflix and chill? You know, is he planning things other than come stay at my house, I come stay at your house? Is he trying to do activities with you? Is he trying to spend some real time with you? Or is he just trying to hang around your house or invite you over to his house? Like, it's it's all about effort of spending quality time in the in the beginning stages. Is he making an effort to spend time with you? Is he texting you pretty frequently throughout the day? Like anything faster than once every six hours is a good sign in a talking stage. If somebody's taking longer than six hours to get back to you in a talking stage, they probably aren't interested in a relationship. Like they might sleep with you, but at least for the time being, they're not interested in anything more. How have you... Have you been on since Saturday? No, Saturday was the last time I was on. I didn't go live last night. Just was feeling down. Like a chill version of Minecraft. <laughs> in a way. In a way. Like, my the best way to describe the new Zelda game is you feel like you're sitting down in a sandbox with an action figure and you're kind of just taking whatever's around and throwing it into your wor world. Yes, my wife. <laughs> Where do you stand on dating coworkers? If you're not, if you're okay with losing that job, go for it. You know, YOLO. You only get one life, and if your soulmate happens to be your coworker, go for it. But if things don't work out, you have to realize you're risking your job. You could be risking your job even even dating them. You got to figure out what the policies are at the place you work. He has been making dates, yes. So, Adelie, he sounds pretty genuine. So, that's all, all good signs. <laughs> you need this four foot nine Latina to cook for you? I'll, s I'll wear a mini skirt. 
I've always been the one to put in more, I guess, and then I en ended up get getting hurt. Well, communicate your needs when they're not being met, Adam. My main weakness, I can't say that on TikTok. Hello, Reginald. Rihanna, how dare you send a doc? That's preposterous. Evening, Ken. How are you, Jesse? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Where have you been? Uh, Jess was feeling down yesterday, so I didn't go live. I spent time with her instead. My friends tell me to go with the flow. Exactly. Just be you. Just be you and see where it goes. It's either going to go well or it's not going to go well. He's either going to put an effort back or he isn't. And drop him if he doesn't. Hello, Galaxy Car Man. I found you again. Hello, Sabrina. Sabrina, thank you for the follow. I guess I'm keeping my job. TikTok main weakness. All right, my main weakness that is TikTok appropriate. Ass. A nice juicy, juicy ass. <laughs> Daniela, hello. How are you, Daniela? Jody, welcome. You've been very well good. Bye. Maddie, hi. What do I look for in a partner? Somebody who's compassionate, empathetic, a good communicator, and a nice ass. Colleen, hello. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> but I need somebody with good morals, good communication, some empathy. You know, we need... You need to care if you're hurting me, and I need to care if I'm hurting you. That's what I, what I need in a partner. TikTok creator <laughs> turns human. I'm from Bolivia, but I live in the United States. Well, hello. Daniela from Bolivia. Miss MK07, hello. Sean Wolfman. Yo, we need more Love Rangers. The Love Rangers have been slipping lately. If you're not a Love Ranger yet, click the star. It's only one lunchable month. And you'll get love next to your name, just like Rihanna, just like Reginald. And you'll get to use cute emotes. This is cute. And brunch daddy. And I'll follow you back. And you get a Love Ranger color live in front, in front of everybody. How are you, Colleen? Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Is there a body, lang body language I should look for or just communicate? Just communicate. Just communicate your needs if they're not being met. You need to figure out your love language. You need to figure out his love language if you're serious about this person. I would consider you a beautiful man. Well, thank you. I am all just planning for a road trip. How are you? I'm great. Where are you road tripping to, Colleen? Don't worry, hi. I already know mine. I don't, I don't know his yet. If you can figure out his attachment style, anxiously attached people, their love language tends to be physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time, and avoidant people, their love language are usually acts of service and gifts. Anne Marie, how are you? From Canada to Denver. Are there any special interests that you like in a person? Not just a partner, but in a friend too? I mean, I'm a, my attachment style, I'm, I'm secure. I consider myself securely attached. Any, any special, special interest that you like in a person? I mean, it doesn't hurt if they're a nerd like me. If they're into video games, that's a plus. Because I'm a nerdy video game person. So we love that. Anything else, I don't care. Just be you. You know, whatever you're into, that's awesome. And I'm going to be supportive, whatever you're into. I will talk to you later, tired and a little blah tonight. I'm sorry, Rihanna. I hope you start feeling better. Super Ken for Superboy. My love language is food. As an anxious attachment, mine is words of affirmation and quality time. I'm secure, I'm secure too. Thank God for therapy. That's awesome. Rochelle. Elizabeth, hello. I can lean anxious sometimes, so I do have to catch myself if I'm ever feeling anxious. So I'm still human. I'm not perfect. I slip up sometimes. Y'all, we need some corgis tonight. And we need 50 more Love Rangers. Click the star. This gaming high five. Your boy needs a stretch. Hi, Elizabeth. 
Katie22. Hello. Welcome. Is this your car? This is a love ship. Can cars be in space? We're literally in space, Rochelle. Thank you for being here. Vizera, hi. Trevi, welcome. I heard you're good at algebra. Can you replace my X without asking why? I'm so confused. So, Rochelle, this is a love ship. We cruise through the galaxy of love all day. And for one lunchable month, you can click the star in the love ship and become a love ranger. And you'll get love next to your name, just like Rihanna. And just like Reginald. And you'll get to use cute emotes. This is cute. And brunch daddy. And I'll follow you back. And you get a love ranger color live in front of everybody. How are you, Ronnie? Chad, welcome. I need to start doing love ranger only lives. Because our love ranger number is dwindling. We only have 19 love rangers right now. How are you, Ronnie? Lily Tats, hi. Daniela, welcome. But I feel like it's very important when we're in a relationship, just, just be you. Don't play games. Don't worry about texting somebody too much. Don't worry about doing this or doing that or who asks who out. If you want to go out with somebody, just ask them. If you want to spend time with somebody, just ask them to spend time with you. Communicate your needs. And if a person's not into you, they're going to make excuses of why they can't hang out. Headed to bed. Colleen, good night. Thank you for being here. They're going to make excuses why they can't hang out if they're not into you. If you flirt with somebody and you call them attractive and they don't do it back, they're probably not that into you. So that's what I'm afraid of. Don't be afraid of it, Adelie. Literally just be yourself. And people are either going to accept you or they're not going to accept you. Texting too much and pushing pushing them away. You cannot push somebody away who's actually into you. You cannot push somebody away who wants you. Like, my girl cannot text me too much. That's impossible. If you can text somebody too much, they're not that into you. You might trick them to be into you for a year or two, but the relationship is going to crumble one day. You want some solid foundation. And somebody who doesn't like clingy can never set solid foundation in a relationship, ever. Ever. They have commitment issues. They will never stand still. They will never sit still and create foundation for the relationship. A relationship with somebody who doesn't like clingy will always crumble. It doesn't matter who they're with. That relationship will always crumble one day. Does forward partners give you anxiety? Forward partners as in communicating or what? Communication is key. Facts. That's my ex. He was dismissive of winning. Yeah. A dismissive of winning can never have a stable relationship ever. It will never be stable. That relationship was always built on sand. Always. Hola, hello. This girl I know just got divorced last month and she's already posting a new guy. <laughs> Saying, I can't believe God, God sent you to me, my true love. <laughs> it's said to me. Reginald, I love, I love that you instantly saw the red flag. We love that. What's a dismissive avoidant? I'm new here and want to learn more. So a dismissive avoidant is somebody who had to grow up too fast, Lucy. They've learned to rely on themselves. So when, it, when they grow up and they enter relationships, they refuse to trust and rely on people as well. They they believe a relationship should be two separate people coexisting. You know, roommates is basically how a dismissive avoidant sees a relationship. You, this is my life. This is your life. Sure, we're in a relationship, but our lives are parallel. We live in the same place. We sleep together, but... I'm going to do whatever I want. You do whatever you want. I want my freedom. The dismissive avoidance are terrified of losing their independence. So they constantly talk about freedom, clingy, insecure, controlling. Those are the things that they fear the most. They do not want to lose their independence because they've learned through their entire life that they are the only person they can count on. They're the only person they can rely on. So they, they don't allow themselves to rely on a partner, not for emotional support, any sort of sort of support. They're hyper independent. So that is a dismissive avoidant. Some dismissive avoidants are so bad that they will sleep in a different bed than their partner. Some are so bad that they will sleep in a different house. Separate houses. It can it can be that bad. It's all all on a spectrum, as is everything. But a dismissive avoidant, you know, they ultimately it's a base fear of losing their independence, Lucy. 
It's a fear of intermingling, becoming one with somebody. So they will always be running from their relationship, always running from their partner, always shutting down. They are the most fragile of all the attachment styles. They will crumble at any, any sort of conflict. They crumble and shut down. I'm going to wait for the day she removes her post. And it'll, it'll be great. But her entire TikTok page is about how, how she's the victim, but jumping into another speaks on it. Exactly, Reginald. I... I'm not going to talk about what the subject was, Reginald, but I saw a video on my FYP too. And um, it was it was something similar where the guy was definitely not a healthy person at all. But I was like watching those videos and I'm like, I can't tell if he's reacting to you. And then I looked at her page and her page is about like borderline and, and narcissist relationships. I'm like, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. We have two, we have two unhealthy people. Like it wasn't a victim and a perpetrator. We have like two perpetrators here <laughs> together. But everybody was obviously on their side, but it's because they don't know any better. They can't see through it. But I like, I saw right through that video. I'm like, girl, I ain't buying it. I ain't buying your, your victim shit right now. I dated a guy like that. He was upset when I told him I was done with him treating me like an option. Like an option. My ex, whenever I would try to communicate an issue, sorry. My ex, whenever I would try to communicate an issue, would ignore me for days and then come back. Exactly. That's what they do. That's what a dismissive one is. They shut down at any sort of conflict. You're beautiful. Thank you. If if someone does something unloyal in a relationship. What can they do to gain trust back? Whatever it was that allowed you to cheat or be unloyal, you have to sacrifice that for the relationship. So for example, if you were, if you slid into somebody's DMs and you like sent them pictures, the options are you get rid of that social media completely or your partner has your password. And that's that's just the consequence of your own actions. You know, like once once you cross the line and you, your partner is willing to forgive you, you're going to have to sacrifice whatever it was that allowed you to cross that line. That's how I feel. If I were with somebody and they cheated, they cheat, they went out with their girlfriends to a club and cheated on me. If you're going to be in a relationship with me, you're never going to the club with your girlfriends again. You know, like those are our options. You either sacrifice the club with your girlfriends or this relationship. Like that's where we're at right now. Because I trust, I trusted you in the beginning to do that. But you've shown me I can't trust you to do that. And I will never trust you to do that because once a cheater, always a cheater. It's a, cheating is a behavioral pattern. So that opportunity has to be closed. That that uh, door needs to become a wall now. In her case, she's super high maintenance. And if she doesn't get what she wants, she leaves him. Rolla, thank you for the follow. Yeah, Reginald, this, this person you're talking about sounds very narcissistic. Giving narc vibes for sure. The same with her mom for months in Vegas for setting expectations and being first to decide and plan things. For setting oh setting expectations, um, being being first to decide and plan things, men want it, but but get scared. When it comes to things that men want, but they quote unquote quote get scared, it, the scared more comes from the possibility that you're going to resent them for it because it's very possible to start resenting men if you're the one who's planning everything so as long as you you don't resent them or make them feel like a lesser of a man because you plan things and plan whatever you want being forward setting expectations those are boundaries 100 set those in the beginning that's awesome that you do that caro that you said set your boundaries and expectations in the beginning because we need to know what you're okay with what i'm okay with and if i'm not okay with 
you not being okay with something, that's also okay. You know, if I have a boundary of like, I don't want my girlfriend to wear shirts where I can see her gumdrop buttons. If I can see the hairs, on count all the hair follicle, follicles on her gumdrop buttons. And she's like, I want to wear whatever I want. It's like, okay, neither one of us are wrong, you know, but there needs to be a choice. One of us has to budge or the relationship just isn't going to work out. We need to find a compromise. How are you? I'm great. Nersanti, how are you? Cheating kind of puts in the doghouse facts. What's my type? Bad bitch. I'm not going to lie. I don't think cheating is a redeemable offense. I agree. 100% Reg. I would never take back a cheater. You want other people so bad, go get them without me. Facts. So I used to trust right away. And now I feel like they need to earn my trust. Yeah, I feel like it's very healthy to assume the best in people. So my thing with trust, as I've said before, is... People get about a 60% trust. I'm giving you the benefit of that benefit of the doubt and your actions are either going to raise my trust in you or lower them you know if you start at 60 percent and you go out with your friends and you text me while you're out all right my trust goes like to 70 80 percent if it starts at the six and you don't go out with your friends at all without your partner now your trust is like a nine or ten you got like a masterpiece trust if you're like i'm not doing i'm not doing single activities unless my partner's with me absolutely not you know, you want to hang out with me, let's get let's get wine and charcuterie. I'm not going to the club with you, girl. I'm in a relationship. Now you got 10 trust. <laughs> That's a, a masterpiece trust. Like, depending on your actions, it goes up and down. Like, if you go out with your friends and all of a sudden I don't exist, you can't text back, you don't pick up your phone, your six goes to zero. I don't trust you at all. This relationship's not going to work. Boxers or briefs? Or boxer briefs? Boxer briefs. I never really agreed with once a cheater or always a cheater. Well, it's true. It's science. I I am a firm believer that cheating is in your DNA. It's either who you are or who it's not. I also believe that you can suppress your need to cheat. Just, just like other mental disorders, you could suppress your urge to fill in the blank. Whatever that blank is. Just because you have the me the mental disorder that makes you have urges to do X Y Z doesn't mean you act on those urges. I feel like you're either a che you're either monogamous or you're polyamorous. And if you're a, po a polyamorous person, and you want to live a life with monogamy, you're gonna have to fight the urges to cheat. But a cheater is a cheater. They will always be a cheater. And they they need to fight their urges, and they're gonna have to go to therapy, whatever. The, option, the options have to go. If you if you cheat on me and I'm taking you back, which I would never. In a hypothetical situation, if you've cheated on me, whatever led to you cheating, you're not allowed doing anymore. It's as simple as that. Like if you cheated on me with a coworker, oops, you can't work anywhere where men work. Now you have to be a nail tech. <laughs> you know, like whatever it was that led to you cheating, if I'm taking you back, that, that thing's got to go. But I, I would never take a cheater back. Hello, Jess. Boundaries are important. Very, very important. Ken's stance is that men only want it if they if they like the girl. Is that men only want it if they if they like the girl? What what what? I say it must be really good. I've got a contact in. I think if a a person wants to change, they can make it happen with therapy and counseling yes they can learn you can learn to maintain whatever is going on with your mind with therapy and counseling i agree boundaries are important they are important speaking of ken's type she's here <laughs> so that answers your question first what about what about the se the seven rest lady ladies need alone time you can take alone time without disrespecting your relationship Good evening, sir. Hello, Zach. Everybody needs alone time every once in a while, but we communicate our need for space. You know, like alone time isn't going to the club. You can have alone time at brunch. You can have alone time at bowling. You can have alone time at wine and charcuterie. You know, alone time doesn't mean shake your ass at a club 
and try to get free drinks as many free drinks as you can that's not what alone time means when you're over a relationship but if you need alone time you can communicate your need for alone time you know and on your way out you reassure the fuck out of your partner you need to take space with reassurance we all need space every once in a while but reassure on your way out reassure your partner how much you're going to miss them even if you don't even if you won't miss them just play pretend just let them feel like you're going to miss them cheating may feed insecurities and some compulsive disorders facts Allie, hello once you lose zach he never come back <laughs> how are you zach thank you for the advice i'm going to sleep good night good night thank you for being here Allie. It's a love ship. It is a love ship. DM me hello. No, he is really... <laughs> I'm on <laughs> I'm modding tonight for real one. I've been missing everything. You guys are muting. Amy, how dare you send a duck? Well, alone time is so important. Yes, it can be. Alone time is on a spectrum. Again, alone time is more important to some than it is others. It's the it's the love battery thing. You know, some of us are love batteries fuller than others. Some of us are love battery charges faster than others. We all we all need alone time eventually, but how much alone time we need and when we need it is dependent on the person. My phone is so odd trying trying to click things. I think people can change. I think people can change too. Unless they have some sort of um disease or disorder that stops that from happening while she hello the person was too sus for me jess is his type jess is my type jess is my only type <laughs> long time's not going to the club truth reassuring is top tier i wish i didn't have to beg for reassurance and don't don't settle until you don't have to you know communicate your need for reassurance like communicate your needs Right in the beginning, you start talking to somebody, have the conversation of like, oh, like what are what are some things that you need in a relationship to you know feel your best, to feel secure, to feel the most secure in a relationship? Like what are what are some things you need? And you could be like, oh, like I I just need some reassurance. Like I I understand we all need our alone time here and there. Like if if you could just like reassure me on your way out about how much you're gonna miss me and how much you love me or whatever, you know. That would be that would be super helpful and that would make me feel really appreciated in this relationship or in general a relationship if you're just a talking stage like how the how the communication in the beginning about what you need in a relationship and what you expect from your partners not in a nagging way but just uh this, these are my needs like this is what makes me feel the most loved and the most secure and most happy I love when Amy's in the house. I'm on here. We stand, we stand Amy. See, even Zach. <laughs> See, Amy's the queen. Hey, Elkster. Give me a holler if you need help. I'm itching to meet people. Can men tell if a woman has daddy issues? Uh, men who are aware of the psychology, sure. Yes. Not all men, though. Some of us can tell. TX Angel, hi. You love me, thank you, Ian. Terry's here to give suggestions. Terry's, Terry's been eating Skittles. <laughs> Picking apples with an angry pirate. Ken's getting so behind on comments, I'm trying. It's good when I get behind on comments. That means I got some shit to say. Tristel, hello. Yes, you're so right. Anything I needed, I used to be told I was too needy. Yeah. And you're you're always going to be too this or too that for somebody who doesn't love you. You know, if any but if anybody says the word too, you're too you're too much this, you're too this, you're too that. In a negative way, like it's OK to be like, oh, you're too hard on yourself in a positive way, you know, in a reassuring way. Oh, you're you're too much. You're too needy. Go find lies, right? Because I'm not I'm not too much. I'm not too anything, for my person. 
my person has the capacity to love me. You know, we're only as needy as our unmet needs. I love your lives. Thank you, Zach. Hello, Andrea. Can you hear too much for that shirt? Not Jess. Jess is the most perfect ever. What do you do when a guy stops showing effort after a month? What exactly is he not doing in terms of effort? Like not planning dates? Like what is what is the main thing for you? I've been told I'm too sarcastic when I'm upset. Is that guy? I'm always, I'm definitely too sarcastic. <laughs> So do men likely to trust their boy around their girl? I feel like we wouldn't be friends with somebody we wouldn't trust around our partner. I wouldn't be friends with a guy if I felt like he's going to try something with my girl. You know? Geek girl only. Hello. How are you? And I would assume girls would be the same way. I don't feel like ladies would be friends with a woman who they feel like is going to try and sleep with their man. You know, if they if they can't trust her to don't tr don't try anything with my boyfriend, then why would you be their friend? So like same thing. Kitty, thank you so much for joining my team and send me a little heart. For guys, it's the same thing. Like I'm not going to have a guy friend if I feel like they would try anything with anybody I was trying to date. Good old fashioned mill oh no. When I was upset can make makes me laugh. I try. He did do chest workout today. I did. I did work my chest today. These buttons are about to pop. Change after a whole month. Change in what way? Tristel. In what way did he change? I guess around. I'm good too. If you want to show this, so that's all that's only for you. Is sending a good morning text to your partner important? Yes. It sure is. Thank you for, for the raccoons, Kitty. I've never seen the raccoons before. Jenny, hi. Ken giving us a shout. Am I? <laughs> Handsome man. Thank you. Send docs. Ken loves us. Don't send docs. Job Corey's free boy. My house great. So I haven't heard him lately because it's nighttime. He's sleeping. Galley high. In what way has he changed in the one month? Let's let's get specific so I can help you specifically. We need to know if this is this is a red flag or not. No messages in the day. Because he feels he doesn't have to show effort. He's communicated. He feels like he doesn't have to show effort. You need a new boyfriend. You know, as simple as like, look, I understand that you don't feel like you need to show effort, but I need my partner. I need a partner who's going to make effort no matter what time of day it is. I need a partner who's going to make effort in the morning, in the afternoon, in the nighttime. You know, I'm not looking for a part time partner. So if you're not gonna if you're not gonna step up and be full time, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill your position with somebody who wants to be full time. We don't do part time relationships around here. Only calls in the night. I mean, he might only have time to call in the night. I don't know his schedule, but just just if he's communicated, he doesn't want to put an effort in the. Or are you assuming that? Are you, has he communicated he does not want to put effort in the morning? Or are you assuming because he doesn't? We don't do part time. Sometimes downtime, etc. We do it all, all the time. Like let's let's assume let's assume he just doesn't do it and he hasn't communicated that he doesn't feel like he should. Then you let him know, like, hey, I miss you throughout the day and I know you're busy, but it would make me feel so loved if you could just check in at lunchtime and maybe once throughout the day while you're working and go from there. Somebody who cares about you will be, sure, I can do that. 
I can check in. Somebody who doesn't really care about you will roll their eyes like, ugh, you're so needy. You're so clingy. You're so needy, you need me to send, I'm thinking of you at lunch. I'm trying to eat my grilled cheese sandwich. The fuck out of here. That person doesn't love you. What's with men afraid to try and show effort, but then women are told to, to stop obsessing? So that is not a man-woman thing, Caro. That is a dismissive, avoidant, anxious thing. Um, an avoidant person is afraid to show effort and tell the anxious person to stop obsessing. Stop being clingy. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. You're too much. You're too needy. You're too loving. You want to spend too much time with me, but I'm with you every second of the day. They're just, they complain about love. They don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to open up. They don't want to put an effort. They do not want any sort of solid foundation of a relationship. Avoidance want to maintain their independence. Nothing more. They want a roommate. They want a roommate that they can sleep with. Just, just asking for friends here. Michelle writes hi. How are you, Michelle? So the guy is free in the day and doesn't text in the day. And he's... And she's always the one, and she's always the one who texts first. It doesn't matter who's who texts first. Like that's game playing stuff. Just text them if you want, if you want to talk to them. You want to check in. Just text them. Send a meme. Send a TikTok video. Whatever. Just check in. Don't don't play the game of who's texting first. It doesn't matter. But in general, if you want to, if you want a little more effort in the morning, just ask for it. Just let them know how positive word it would make you feel if he did these things. Because it's very important when we communicate our needs not being met, we don't belittle our partner, we don't attack our partner, we let our partner how know how good we would feel if they did this. I'd feel so appreciated, I'd feel so beautiful, I would feel so loved, I'd be, feel so cared for if you could fill in the blank instead of you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't do enough of this. We need we need positive words. People are more are more li likely to be receptive to making somebody feel good than it is to correct themselves because I'm not good enough. You know, like, oh, I'm not good enough because I'm not texting you enough. Like, oh, it'll it'll make you feel loved if I do that? Okay, I'll do that. I'll do this thing that'll make you feel something positive instead of attacking me. Make it about you and your needs. Love checking in. Same. If you wanted to, he would, period. Takes two, two seconds to text exactly. No text uh, all in a day is a red flag. I feel like it's a red flag if somebody doesn't check in at least once every six hours. You know, that's four times a day. <laughs> Obviously, you're sleeping eight hours. We get a good morning. We get a good night. At least two times we're talking in between good morning and good night. Very easy in the talking stage. Once you're in a relationship, all gloves are off. All bets are off. When you're in an actual relationship... You should not have any sort of anxiety about texting somebody too much. <laughs> Don't let them gas gaslight you or make excuses. Facts. Chetty, unless there's something particular going on that he's told you about, that's bad. Andrea, thank you so much for the follow. Tristel, thanks for the follow. Do you recommend dating apps? Would I recommend dating apps? No. Are dating apps doable? Yes. My one of my best friends got married to somebody that they met on a dating app. So you can make dating apps work. If you're going to do dating apps, I would do your do your first round of likes, whatever. And once you match with somebody, just, just focus on one, two, three people at a time. Nothing more. Nothing more. You're not, you're not allowed responding to any DM slides, sliding into any DMs. And so you, until you've tried with these three people first and give them 24 hours, you're not going to, if you go a full 24 hours, not saying a word to me on to the next one, you don't give my loyalty anymore. You can come back. Sure. You can come back and give me whatever excuse, but 24 hours, 24 hours of my loyalty. I feel like it's best to just zone in on one person at a time. If, if all possible, get to know somebody for a week or two, make plans to meet up. And see how it goes. If it doesn't go well, okay, on to the next match. But if you're constantly getting matches, talking to this person, flirting with that person, if you're like juggling five, six people, you have a quote unquote roster, it's 
it's going to create a paralysis in you. You're not going to be able to, to decide who I want. Nobody's ever going to be good enough for you. It's a decision paralysis. You know, like, if, if I give you three pizzas to try, if I'm at a station, I've got three, three choices. You can try the, the cheese pepperoni or my pineapple pizza. You know, you'll be able to pick your favorite one. You'll be like, ooh, that's really good. But if I give you like 10 slices to try, by the end of the slices, you're not going to know what you want and you're just not going to pick one because you're overwhelmed with all these choices. Thank you so much for the roses and the hearts. So the fewer people are possible if you're going to do dating apps. Don't be matched with 100 people, flirting with 100 people and going on three dates a week. Don't do that. You know, two, two dates a month. Get to know somebody for two weeks and go on a date. If it doesn't work out, get to know the next person for two weeks, go on a date. Two, three dates a month max. And give it a, give it a fair shot. You know, it's it's another thing, like with all all these all these choices. The roster, one person is slight is slightly off. Lachey, thank you so much for becoming a love ranger. One person's slightly off. If you have 50 matches, you're like, uh. They're not perfect. On to the next one. But that could have been the most perfect person. You're going to go through all these 50 people and you're going to wish you would have gave person number three more of a shot. Because you're like, damn. I threw person number three away because they scratched their eyebrow once and it gave me the ick. But I didn't care because I had 50 matches. <laughs> all right, been laying out lam la laminate flooring. And I'm so beat up. The sad thing is I only got... Got the closet done. Then, then they don't reply when she when she texts first. Yeah, Tristel, sounds like you're dealing with an avoidant. I would ditch them to be honest. But just communicate your needs and see where it goes from there. The game of who texts first is ridiculous. It is. You ain't got You don't have to worry about who texts first when somebody likes you. You just text. Be be free. Brooklyn, thanks you. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> text, texting once every six hours. That's how you get pregnant. <laughs> Okay, take it back. I miss Meow. How are you, cat? TikTok, welcome. Okay, if I if a guy first didn't want a relationship, but after agree, then friend zoning him, he texts. <laughs> what? If a guy first didn't want a relationship, but after agrees and then friend zoning him, I don't know what you're saying. And then they ask if you have Snapchat run. And he wants a relationship. Oh, so he, now he wants a relationship after friend zoning him. He probably just wants to get it in, girl. My dude, you told me the last dude was shit and you were right. I, I give up. Lachey. Unfortunately, I'm always right. <laughs> I am unfortunately always right. With dating apps, I think it depends on the individuals using it. Salty, hello. Like watching multiple shows. <laughs> like watching multiple shows at once, yes. Lache, thank you. Thank you for the little heart thing. I'm gonna tear up all the slices. I can't do dating apps, it's overwhelming. Exactly. You just you just have to if you're gonna do dating apps, don't be don't be juggling 20 people. You're never gonna you're never gonna choose one. Nobody's gonna be good enough. That's a girl out that I that I met at the beach today. Hello, Aaron. Love your content. Thank you. Thank you so much, blonde tatter nurse. No dating apps for me, I agree. You told me oh, I already read that. Hello, Bex Shore. I mean the guy the starts with a creepy joke probably isn't the one i don't know um i feel like when it comes to like creepy jokes it just depends on if you like if you're into the person that's telling it or not you know like if jess would have slid into my dms with a creepy joke it would have worked why are some guys afraid of titles they probably have an avoiding attachment style blonde tatter nurse if people are afraid of commitment no no thanks Grow a little bit and then <laughs> tell me when you're ready. Tell me, let, let me know when you're ready for a relationship. 
Oops, I'm gonna wait. I'm so tired. Off, off to bed, Michelle. Good night. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Hi, Aaron. He's catching up slowly. I am catching up. So hear me out. How do we know if someone's not toxic? If someone's not toxic or just boring? Uh, you'll know You'll know if they're empathetic, if they care. Like, that's how you're going to know if somebody cares about you. Are they, are they making effort to spend time with you? Are they texting you throughout the day? Are they checking in on you, seeing how you're doing throughout the day? Are they saying good morning? Are they saying good night? We want effort. Are you making effort? All right. All, all the boxes are checked that they're making effort. Now, are they toxic? You're, gonna, you're not going to know if they're toxic until something's bothering you or you need to communicate a boundary or you need to communicate a need that's not being met and they try to turn it on you, gaslight you, twist it, flip it. They don't want to take any sort of accountability. They don't want to hear how how they're hurting you because in their head they did I did nothing wrong. It's your problem. It's your problem. You're hurt. I'm not going to, I'm not going to change anything about me. I'm not going to adjust. I'm not, I'm not going to compromise. That's toxic. You know, a healthy person who's unwilling to compromise, you know, just communicate that like, of like, I don't know. I don't agree with that. And if we can't come to an agreement, the relationship is over. Healthy people can communicate through things. Toxic people, they shut down, they hide, they stonewall, they gaslight, Silent treatment, that's how you know, is when there's conflict. How is the conflict resolved? That's how you're, you're going to know if somebody's toxic or not. Do they care about your well-being? Do they care about your happiness? Do they care about your mental health? That's how you're going to know. So the sooner you learn that Ken is right, <laughs> the happier you'll be. Have you met someone you passed up on a dating app in person? No. I've never met anybody from a dating app. Asking people out in person is way better. I juggle 20 because every single one lines. I mean, Jess's point she always she always tells me, which is a good point that Jess makes, is how would you feel if you found out the guy that you are really into is juggling 20 women? Tiff, you know? Like that's a fair point. Like you need you need to become the person that you want to date. Would you be okay? If one of those 20 guys you were really into and they're over here and you're just one of 20 girls that he's juggling and but you're not number one on his 20 list, like that's really shitty. <laughs> that's really shitty. I feel like we should just make more of an effort to to see things out, try things with people, see where it goes. And if it's not working, we just move on. If our if our goal is to just sleep with a bunch of people and be single, be be gypsies, um, then go for it. I'm not judging you. If that's the life you want to live, go for it. But if your goal is to find a forever person, you're not going to find your forever person juggling 20 people. It's not going to happen. Because you're not going to put your all into somebody. Put, put your all into, into somebody who's putting effort back in. And when things aren't working, on to the next one. It's okay. It's okay to be wrong about somebody. Why do guys want a relationship after being friend zone? Because they want to get it in. Or it could, or it could be the ultimatum. Like, all right, I guess if you're gonna for, if you're gonna force me to commit, I will commit. But again, they sound like an avoidant, Tristel. They sound like an avoidant, and a relationship with them is not gonna be a pleasant one. Creepy <laughs> joke when I was at a DM when I was too shy to slide into the DMs. Say the hi. That ups you. Sometimes it's because they want what they can't have. Sometimes it's different. Facts. So he's boring. <laughs> um, boring people are probably secure people. Lache. So if he's boring, latch on to him. Because he's probably a good one. Amy, how dare you send a dog? If you find yourself a boring man who treats you well, he communicates, he doesn't fight, he talks through problems, latch your claws into him. You found one of the very few. You found a gold mine. You struck gold with that boring man so if you're at least physically attracted to him work on yourself heal yourself until you learn to appreciate the calmness that he brings but i i'm a firm believer that only boring people can be bored if you find an, an entire human being to be boring you're boring 
That's a whole human there. How can you be bored with a whole human right in front of you? you there's so many things you can do with a whole living being human. <laughs> Hello, hello, Sarah, how are you? Is there something shady if they want to grow in silence? Or is, is that a line? Grow in silence? What do you mean grow in silence? I met a guy and it's been perfect. Something's wrong, I know it. Tiff, stop. Don't sabotage it. After he got friend zoned because he said he's ready for a relationship and suddenly he... I don't only want them talking to me. I'm working to figure out what's wrong with Ken for a while and still haven't found. Um, what is wrong with me? There's a lot of things that are wrong with me. So maybe not. Is there? Before meeting in person, I expect them to be <laughs> to be talking to others. I believe listening to people when I when I meet them and some guys get uncomfortable with talking about themselves i mean i'm uncomfortable talking about myself i think it's a green flag if somebody's uncomfortable talking about themselves i think it's a good sign i'm a forever person same they're meeting up as sort of like they still talking to other people yeah i agree once you meet up once your lips have kissed are we loyal or not <laughs> are we are we working towards exclusivity or not We need some corgis. Corgis are getting destroyed right now. In the ducks versus corgis. Drop some corgis for you, boy. Multiple reasons talking to others got scared. Still sowing wild oats. There's a guy that I bond with incredibly. We are naturally attracted to each other mentally. And he... If he's boring, just add hot sauce. <laughs> When you tell him you only want to date him, and he says he wants to date other women, run facts. I have chocolate in my purse, but my purse is all the way by the front door. Oh no. That's what I have, but doesn't want to pick it. Put it on social media because he wants to not risk it. Blonde had a nurse. I, ha I posted a video literally today. Literally today about <laughs> what is what's the quote on my video? Um, he doesn't want to post us on social media because he wants to protect it. And the the sound is, you are the dumbest bitch with the biggest heart. And I love 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 that. <laughs> Nobody hide your relationship to protect it. The only thing he's protecting is his single status. I'm a super fun person. What's your favorite childhood memory? Probably Christmas when I got a PlayStation 1 is my favorite childhood memory. Because that was the most magical Christmas I ever remember. I was like six or seven years old. And of course your boy still believed in Santa. I express interest, but he, he used to be alone. How do I navigate this in a healthy way? He's expressed interest, but he is used to being alone. What is he struggling with, Tracy? With the idea of a relationship. Respect his boundaries. Both people's boundaries are important. So in a relationship, you lay your boundaries down. I lay my boundaries down. We have this gap. We communicate and compromise until our boundaries touch. We need to fill the gap. For example, if my bound if I don't like my girl going out. My girl likes going out. Neither one neither one of us are wrong. Can you come home by 11? What about midnight? Okay. If you go out to the bar, that's fine. But if you're going to the club, I'm coming. Okay, I can deal with that. Now the boundaries touch. She still gets to go out because that's important to her. She gets to go out with her friends. But she knows if it's a club, my boyfriend's coming. And then he knows what time his girl's going to be home. She's going to at least be home by by 11 midnight. So he doesn't have to have anxiety all the time. You, you both set your boundaries and you compromise till they touch. 
So don't throw away your boundaries and your needs, Tracy, just for his. Don't throw everything away. Compromise. Your needs are important too. Your happiness is also important. <laughs> Grow in silence like some tree. He's, he's too good to be true. I don't, I don't trust it. Lachey, let him be boring. Put your claws into him. See where it goes. You're going to you're gonna know when conflict starts. How does he treat you? Is he trying to work through things or is he trying to be stubborn and keep hurting you and not change at all? Not compromise at all? I had a conversation with someone who literally is insecure and tries to gas, gaslight me and then trying to flirt with me. That's so weird. The only thing that's wrong with Ken is he doesn't like ketchup on his eggs. Who puts ketchup on eggs? Next dude is going to have to jump through hoops. Isn't. It's a green flag if somebody isn't comfortable talking about themselves. Not is. Isn't. Isn't. Alondra, thanks for the follow. No, we, we need... No, Corey's only ducks. I'm, I'm getting there. Right, they're just hiding the relationship from their their single quote unquote friends facts. So the shorty with chocolate in her purse send that, send that man to get it. Okay. I'm really off to bed. Was listening while getting ready for bed. Good night. Good night, Michelle. Hello, Jessica. What what should I do when my fiance isn't showing any attraction to me? While in a long distance relationship, you'd be like, look, you ain't called me beautiful in a while. Do you understand how amazing it makes me feel when you call me beautiful? So do it more. <laughs> or if if you're a guy, handsome. You ain't called me handsome in a while. You know, you don't want to attack them. Just, fo just focus on the positive and how good it would make you feel. And they'll be like, Damn, I'm really sorry. I mean, you're right. I've been slacking and you're the most beautiful thing in the world. I'm sorry that I haven't been reminding you. You know, somebody who actually cares is going to want to change. If they're going to make a big deal about it, like, oh, why do I have to call you beautiful? You already know I like you because that's what I asked for. I just communicated my need for for positive re reinforcement, some, some reassurance, you know? I communicated my love language. Just call me beautiful. It's easy. It takes two seconds. Some of these male boundaries are dictated by toxic by toxic parents and stuff. He's gonna make someone a good husband or boyfriend. Ken, I put ketchup on my You put ketchup on your eggs? Red flag. Ketchup goes everywhere but eggs. He uses hot sauces at least. Um, for my eggs, I don't put anything on my eggs. No sauce on my eggs. I just eat the eggs. Put some cheese on there. Give me some cheesy eggs. Give me some scrambled eggs and cheese. That's what I like. I don't know how your reaction a level of disagreement. We haven't got there yet. Yeah, and that's when you'll know. You'll know when you start to disagree about things. If he's willing to work through the problems with you. Or if he's going to try to make you the problem. <laughs> Are we going to work through the problems or is he going to try to make you the problem? That's how, that's when you'll know if he's toxic or not. Good night, lovely people. Thank you, Sarah. Good night. He was perfect, but now I'm struggling to get my needs met. Just communicate them. Communicate your lack of needs, but don't attack. Positive words. Positive words. Be playful. Don't attack. Focus on the positive. Men like compliments. Men do like compliments, but we, we all have different love languages. Me, words of affirmation don't really matter. It's nice to hear that I'm handsome, but I don't need it. I need physical touch and quality time. Those are my top two love languages. That doesn't mean the other love languages don't matter and I don't appreciate them. I do I do appreciate gifts and food and um, words of affirmation. I appreciate them, for sure. But I, I don't need them all that often. I don't need to be called handsome. 
a thousand times a day, but it feels nice. It does. It still feels nice. But some of us, words of affirmation is all the way up here. So if words of affirmation is number one, you better be calling your boyfriend, girlfriend, handsome, beautiful, as much as you possibly can. They get ready to go on the date, you hype them up. Just hype up your partner. They're getting ready to leave their house for their friends, you hype them up. You don't say like, oh, you have Medusa hair because you just curled your hair and I want you to feel insecure on your way out. You don't do that. You hype them up and let them know how beautiful they look. <laughs> Let's talk about eggs. I started to put my child up for adoption for putting ketchup on her eggs. I agree 100%. Child right to adoption. That girl That girl needs to be mopping with Annie. ASAP. Maria, hello. I hate ketchup so, so much. And I'm not able to tell if he's about the distance, if it's about the distance or something else. Well, don't, don't start to... Don't start to sabotage and create insecurities in yourself. Just be playful about him not calling you be beautiful. You know, you haven't called me beautiful in a while. What's up with that? You've got the most beautiful girlfriend in the entire world. You're not calling me beautiful. Do you know how amazing it makes me feel when you call me beautiful being as handsome as you are? It makes me feel amazing. Be playful. Be positive about it. And see how he reacts to it. If he reacts in reacts to it in a negative way red flag get out of there girl pull the shoot if you, if somebody reacts negatively to positivity mm -mm, i ain't got time for that when you don't have much free time is it better to focus on one person or see multiple nonchalantly if you don't have free time i feel like it's better me personally i want one person i want one one rock one person to hold it down I'm not trying to get to know five different favorite colors. Gifts for Amy. One but if you're too busy, not, then nothing serious. I won't focus on one. I get so many flyers, so I'm worried I'll miss out on a good one. <laughs> Again, bringing up the Medusa hair. <laughs> Describe quality time. What do, does that entail cooking? So quality time is anything where it's just the two of you. No phones, no distractions, no friends, no family. It's, it's just the two of us. Whether that's going on a road trip together, whether that's sitting on the couch and watching a movie, whether that's going out on a date, walking on the beach, hand in hand. It's intimacy. One-on-one. -on -one, quality time. Spending physical time together. Um, it doesn't even have to be physical. If you want to spend quality time in long distance, you know, you can have FaceTime dates. You can watch a movie together. You know, just be on the phone watching the same movie together. You can play video games together. You know, it doesn't even have to be the same video game. Je Jess and I do that. Like, Jess will play her game and I'll play my game and we'll be on the phone and we'll just talk while we're doing whatever. There's so many ways to spend time. Just the two of you. No other distractions. You're not on your phone. You're not, there's not a third wheel there. You're not with family. You're not with your little, your little cousin. You're not with your little sister, your children, just the two of you. Or just, or even moments. Because you could get quality time, you know, if you're dating a single parent and you take their kids to like a water park or whatever. And like when the kids run off, it's just the two of you and you have your time together. You can get bursts of quality time. But that's quality time. It's just some... Just some you moments, you know, for the memory bank. Hi, right, salsa. Salsa on eggs is okay, but it's like re last resort. Salsa on eggs is happening in chat, and yes, I'm here for it. Kenny, it's plain eggs. <laughs> That's a red flag. I mean, you can put salt and pepper on it and some cheese. Some yum. We need to spice up Ken's taste buds. No. Road trip as up. Um, I'll road trip, <laughs> I'll road trip with my partner. I won't road trip with a random friend. Mm -mm. That's my number one love language name. Quality time. Mm. Quality time is my second. Physical touch is my number one. Because if there's no physical touch, I don't give a fuck about the quality time we're spending. <laughs> I'll convince him who doesn't dip their bacon and eggs and ketchup. 
that the whole child arguing what they put on their eggs. <laughs> I'll break them down and have you. Hello, Taylor. This is the important relationship stuff. Feeling better today? <laughs> Can you so <sell> me? <laughs> Why am I weird? What about breakfast burritos? No. There's so many other things to have for breakfast. Why are we having breakfast burritos? It's, it's, breakfast burritos and soup, same category. Why? Why? I could be having an Egg McMuffin right now. Why am I eating this in burrito form? Will I eat a breakfast burrito? Sure. If I'm not like at a restaurant. If it's at home, you're going to throw some, some bacon in there, some eggs, some syrup, whatever, some cheese in there. Yeah, I'm going to eat it. But would I rather have this on like a English muffin? I sure would. With some melted cheese? Absolutely. And some sausage in there? A sausage patty? Yeah. Save your breakfast burrito if I have options. But I will, I'll eat a breakfast burrito. It's okay. Where are you from, Victoria? I'm from Ohio. Where are you from? Hello, Brandy. Physical touch is my second goes all together. Yes. I'm going to add that to my list of questions to ask. Do you have a job? Ketchup or eggs? <laughs> Last result on salsa and eggs? Yeah. What about chorizo? I'm going to be honest with you. Have I seen the word chorizo before? Yes. Do I know what it is off the top of my head? No. Breakfast on the go. Soup is like soup is. Love soup and breakfast burritos. You would love soup and breakfast burritos. You said no. <laughs> Pancakes and good looking man. Yeah, pan we love pancakes. Was that a breakfast burrito veto? <laughs> As soon to be California boy, you better fix yourself. Breakfast burritos are okay. Like, I'll eat one. But they're not the best thing. You know, I'd rather have other things. Pancakes are gross? You don't know what chorizo is? No. I'm at the top of my head. If you're a man is a morning person and you're not <laughs> will it work yeah it will if you allow him to give you a kiss in the morning and then he leaves you alone while he does whatever you know what is describe trees though to me arizona thank you so much for the ball Brace yourself. breakfast food is superior um, breakfast food is good. It's probably the weakest of all the foods. You know, like, I feel like lunch is superior. Lunch food, number one. Followed by dinner slash supper, if you're from the South. And then breakfast is last. Brunch. Brunch is literally just avocado toast. What do you mean? <laughs> Marissa from California. Hello. I hate breakfast for dinner more than I do for breakfast. It's a type of breakfast sausage. Gotcha. You can have breakfast food any time of the day. You can. Time is all an illusion. It's just a construct of human psychology. <laughs> it's a spicy sausage? Mm -mm. That sounds no. Been trying five minutes to get in. <laughs> Oh no, Vaughn, I would never do that to you. Brunch is just avocado toast, it is. Like, if we're getting brunch, it's like, oh, what kind of avocado toast do you want? You don't want to know what's chorizo, it's something you eat because it's delicious. I, I don't like spicy. <laughs> you didn't pull a soft <laughs> It's not that spicy. I don't know. I Whatever sausage they put on a sausage McMuffin, that's literally the only sausage I like. If it's not sausage McMuffin sausage, I don't fuck with it. I don't want it. I don't want it on my pizza. I don't, I don't want sausage links. I don't want none of that shit. If it's not a sausage McMuffin sausage, get it the fuck away from me. Get it out of my life. <laughs> It's like not hot, spicy, but like, I just don't like sausage. What made you start your videos? Victoria, 
what made me start my videos was I got my heart broke. And I learned about myself. I learned what was wrong with me. And then I learned what was wrong with my last relationship. And then I started reading a book called The War of Art, which is about the muse and resistance. And the muse told me to start making videos about relationships. And I did for an entire month. And guess how many followers I got? My first month of making relationship videos, I got like three fo three followers. <laughs> And then my ex, one of my ex's friends DMs me and she's like, you should go back to making videos about video games instead of relationship videos because that's what you're good at, you know? Because I got like three followers. And I'm like, I hear you, but this is what I'm being told to do right now. I'm being told by the universe, by the muse, by God, whatever you want to call it, to make relationship videos. So thanks, but no thanks. Thanks for the advice, but no thanks for the advice. And literally two days later, I posted a video that went viral and my life has never been the same. So eat it, resistance. You know, the idea of the muse is that if you just listen to the universe, God, the muse, whatever it's telling you to do, you can get whatever you want in life. But you have to listen to it. And the resistance will try to stop you. And resistance comes in many forms. And you got to say, fuck you, resistance. And keep pushing. Keep pushing. Do, when, do what your heart is telling you to do. And that's how I got here. Started from the bottom, now, now I'm here. I went viral overnight. And the momentum, we're still going. You could all down the spice with the amount of eggs you use. Are you at least in with mimosas? Mo mimosas can get it, yes. You like mimosas? <laughs> like a culture. <laughs> sausage with muffins are too good, they are. That's the only sausage that's good. What about Italian sausage? I said what I said. If it's not sausage with muffin sausage, I don't fuck with it. I don't like any sausage that comes from fast food places. They taste like, they taste funky. How long should you wait until you do brunch with his friends? <laughs> um, as long as you feel like this relationship is going somewhere, do it. So I had a situation situationship of eight months. Then found out he had a girlfriend for the last two of it. I called him out. He apologized and we stopped talking. Well, congratulations on stop talking. We don't we don't do situationships for longer than two months. Mm -mm. Two months max for situationships. If y'all have met and you're not committed by two months, if that boy don't love you by now, he's never ever ever gonna love you, as Sierra would say. I found Ken from a viral TikTok. Yes, that's what I do. I make viral videos. <laughs> Three months later, he's uh, upset we, we stopped talking and wants to hang out. He still has the same girlfriend. This, this boy got cheetah written all over him on sassy pants. Well, most of these can always get it. I agree. Well, thanks for making these videos. They're great. Well, Victoria, I'm glad that you enjoy them. I'm glad my videos can make you happy, bring you some sort of joy or some sort of epiphany, some sort of eye-opening moment of, oh shit, everything makes sense now. And like my goal, my goal is to help you all see red flags and set boundaries. And my goal is also to change the perspective that our culture has on anxiously attached people. Anxiously attached people are so special and they need to be protected and we need to learn to hype them up and teach anxiously attached people how to set boundaries and not get walked over because they're empaths and they sacrifice literally everything for everybody and nobody sacrifices for them. So I'm here to teach the empaths, to teach the anxious people on how to set boundaries, stand up for themselves, see the red flags, not put up with bullshit, not be gaslit anymore. We're done with gaslighting. We're in this pandemic of narcissism and your boy's here to put a stop to it as much as I can. I can't do it on my own, you know? I, I can't pretend that I can do it on my own, but I will do my best. I will do my part to help educate people on gaslighting and manipulation and be able to look out for it. Be able to stand up for yourself. You got catfished? Carly, I'm sorry. 
situationships over two months can be filed on your taxes. Can you rate me a six to the power of two? Hmm? Hello, beef and cheese burrito. I got catfished by two guys. Do you... 57% of you put ketchup on eggs? I got catfished by two guys that were trying to be someone else, not the real guys I was talking to. I'm sorry that you went through that. I for sure did. You should be proud of yourself. I'm glad I found them. Well, thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Victoria. You're very sweet. I try my best to do my best. Wait, wait, wait. Deviled eggs don't count. We're talking a big veto for mustard. Mustard on scrambled eggs? Mustard doesn't belong anywhere. Mustard is banned. Nobody's putting mustard on anything on purpose except for psychopaths. A uh, mustard is being added to the DSM-6 for sociopathy. They're bringing sociopathy back and they're putting likes mustard, puts ketchup on eggs as number two. Who puts, who puts mustard on anything? Tell you ladies what, I'll slide into your guys' DMs to test them. <laughs> who will for me? Based on your comments on gaslighting and narcissistic people, I get why my FYP found you. Yes, it's on purpose, you know? I flirt with the FYP. I'm blowing kisses this way. Now I'm hungry. Don't, don't be asking if you can't handle the truth. Facts. Hold your tongue on that gray poupon. <laughs> Can you accept me putting ketchup on eggs? Yes, as long as you don't put them on mine. You put whatever you want on your eggs. Will I judge you? Yes. My stance on mayo? Miracle Whip? Mayo? Mustard is my favorite condiment, though. So maybe my FIP is wrong. <laughs> You're handsome, thank you. Daisy High. We love Miracle Whip. Real mayonnaise? Yikes. Mm -mm. Real mayonnaise is a no. But your boy is going to bed. I love and appreciate it all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Click the follow button if you're new. Follow me on Instagram at Gaming and congratulations. To the eight-time Corgi Duck champion of the world, Jess. Unless somebody drops four corgis really fast and I quickly end the live. Jess won the Corgi Duck Championship. If you want to FaceTime with me or a phone call with me, link tree in the bio. Book a phone call with me. If you want this lovely light behind me. Is Jess on seven wins? Is it actually seven? Lucky number seven? If you want this light or anything else, if you want any books that I recommend, link to in the bio. Go to my Amazon store. I love and appreciate all so much. Change your contacts. I did. Just reminded me. Thank you, Beef and Cheese, for joining my little team. I couldn't DM Jess. Um, I'm going to retire if Jess wins nine. If Jess wins nine Corgi champions in a row, I'm retiring. What's your thoughts on pretty women dating less attractive? I think um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if that woman is attracted to him, sure. Go for it. Women are very beautiful. And I feel like all women are more beautiful than, than men. Jess is more beautiful than I am. I'm less attractive than Jess. Jess is a solid 10. I'm a solid 7.5. Um... Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But if it's like, girl, you know? If it's girl, then she's probably a narcissist. She's probably using that guy because he's got money or connections, status, something. She's got something he wants and it's not his heart. <laughs> if, we, if we see a 10 with a girl, I, 
I'm not a betting man, but if I had to put all my money on narcissism or cluster B personality disorder, I'm doing it. <laughs> you won't retire. No, I will retire. I will retire. He admits to being shallow. Yes, I am shallow. I am shallow. I want a baddie. I want to marry a baddie. I'm a shallow person. And I want somebody who's nice on my eyes. <laughs> if um if Jess wins nine times in a row, I'm retiring from live. <laughs> Can somebody everyone gets old? Yeah, but here's the thing. Until we get old, be hot, you know? Until you get old, be hot. And while you're hot, I'm going to fall in love with you. And when we're in love, it's too late. You know, we're going to get old to old together, whatever, you know. But until then, be hot. You know. If you can help it, be hot. Marry a baddie. <laughs> Hello, Matthew Mason. Just be hot. And, you know, thankfully, technology is going to help us de-age a little bit. So things are going to be well. You know, Jess's mom is a baddie. We got a long way to go. Just, 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 Jess, Jess's uh, mileage is very low, very low. Her mom's a baddie, so I ain't got anything to worry about with Jess. Need a boyfriend? <laughs> she was beautiful. All right, I love you all so much. Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your night. Sweet dreams. Bye, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow in the love ship when I retire, if Jess wins. So bring your corgis so that Jess cannot win. We need to reset the number. We cannot let Jess win. Otherwise, I have to quit live streaming forever. Congratulations to the corgi dog champion, Jess. Yes, I'm retiring at nine. I will. <laughs> I need to get... All right, goodbye, everybody.